Tonight, we are going to be learning from Dr. Chris Milkey about how to create a $100,000 cash-based practice, as well as learn more about the cash service of Class 4 laser technology with Dr. David Zuckerman. But first, I'm going to do a quick introduction of Dr. Milkey. He has been in practice for 28 years uh, with a multi-doctor and a multi-location practice. He is a national speaker on both marketing and practice building principles. He has been a coach and consultant to podiatrists over the last several years and is also the author of two practice management books. And what's something you will also learn a little bit more about tonight is the popular marketing product called the Ultimate Podiatric Marketing Machine. So we're really excited to have Dr. Milkey on air with us tonight. Uh, and then also David Zuckerman has more than 14 years of clinical experience with laser technology. In 2007, he became involved with class four laser therapy, high energy systems. And for the last almost 20 years, he's really been a pioneer in developing and training and new technology. So another thing that David's going to really add to the presentation tonight is his hand in helping practices create wealth with technology, specifically laser technology. And if you have time after the webinar to visit his website, which is Zuckerman FT for future technology, or you can go to theremilaser.com, um, you'll see testimonials from physicians that David has worked with that voice and, and speak specifically to that, how David has helped them not only understand how to use laser technology, but how he has helped them understand how to use it in a way to make money for the practice. So with that, I'm going to give it to Dr. Zuckerman. I've, I've listened to Dr. Milky many times on webinars. Uh, I, don't, I don't know him that well, but I feel like uh, in the last uh, few months, I've got to know him very well. And I want, I want to summarize, I mean, your, your bio is pretty impressive. But what impresses me, and I try to reflect on my over 40 years as a podiatrist, and that's this. You, you're, you need a mentor. Every successful person has a mentor. And I think Chris is a mentor, okay? He has experience, and he's a mentor podiatrist. He's walked the walk for you. Uh, he, I'm sure he's made a lot of mistakes. These things don't happen overnight, learning and getting it right. And that's what impresses me. I want to see uh, the podiatric profession to be happy, to enjoy life, and, and why we came in and enjoy patients and their practice. I bring technology. I do have practice management experience. But I want you to learn from mentors. And that's why I brought Chris on tonight. And I, Chris, I want to thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart for taking the time to do this. All right. Thanks a lot, David. I really appreciate it. Thank you for that introduction. Both of you, uh, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited about uh, these topics. Uh, when you marry, um, you know, innovation and marketing, um, I just think it's the perfect marriage uh, for a podiatry practice. So um, we're going to go through a number of things regarding how to create a hundred thousand dollar cash profit center for you. And I can tell you that this, David mentioned, like you make a lot of mistakes. I've made many mistakes. You know, learning how to prescribe and sell, and yes, I'm gonna use the word sell cash services to patients, did not come naturally to me. And I still work at it. And um, I'm always looking to improve. You know, the biggest room is the room for improvement. So getting to yes with patients is not something that came naturally to me. Uh, I keep working at it and, um, you know, just uh, baby steps. And, and if you're not good at doing it now, hopefully by the end of this presentation, you'll have some practical ideas to take home with you and use tomorrow in your business uh, because, you know, increasing the percentage of cash services in your business is what I call insurance against the insurance companies because we all know uh, the direction they're going and it's certainly, you know, not going to be to our benefit. So with that, let's dive in, Sarah, if we can go to the next slide. It always starts with better and faster outcomes. You know, they don't necessarily have to be faster, uh, but better outcomes. So we're gonna talk about money and we're gonna talk about technology, but um, let's be honest, if we don't get a good outcomes for our patient, then none of it matters. So for any of you that think that, you know, we're just here to talk about how to make more money and more revenue and more profit, um, we all know, David and I've been doing this for a long time, that without good outcomes and good relationships with patients, the marketing and the innovation don't make any difference. Next slide, please. 
These are two common questions I get. I've been in over a hundred, either in or consulted with over a hundred podiatrists in the last few years. And these are the questions I get. I've been in offices. I've seen how offices run. I've met face to face. I've met over the phone. I've given lectures, all these different things. And these are two questions that come up commonly. How do I get my patients to say yes to cash services? And we're going to talk about that. How do I find more patients willing to pay for cash services? And my simple answer to that is they're sitting in your treatment chairs. People aren't walking around with signs on their head that say, I'm willing to pay for cash services. These are just every, everyday patients, ordinary patients. And one of the things I learned from my mentor, Dan Kennedy, who if you just look at him up and see all the different books and marketing things and business principles that guy's done, um, I've learned that your, your area, your people, and your business aren't different from anybody else's. Because that's one of the things I hear is, well, my area is different. In this part of the country, this, and this part of the country, that. People are people. Yes, there are areas that are more well-to-do. There are areas that are middle class, and there's some that you know, are, are lower middle class or even on the indigent side. Um, we all know that, but people are people. And um, you know, David just told a story about how his first laser sale to someone who had a big Medicaid practice. So we can't prejudge anybody. Um, our patients that are, are buying cash services are already in our offices. Now, certainly we'll talk about marketing to bring more in, um, but you don't really have to look that far for patients that are willing to pay for cash services. Next slide, please. The most important part of any business are innovation and marketing. Peter Drucker, he's written many books on business and management and marketing. And I just love this because really, truly, this is how I think about my business. I mean, I'm always looking to innovate with whether it's laser technology or shockwave technology or regenerative medicine technology or something for neuropathy. Um, I want to do that. I want that to be something that my patients get from me. Um, I get excited about innovation. I get excited about the Remy laser because I know how successful it is. And I just love technology like that. But marketing, I mean, if you don't have more patients coming in the door, and if you don't keep the patients in your practice that are already walking through the door, then this is not going to be a perfect marriage. So you can have all the innovation you want, but if you don't have people sitting in your treatment chairs and more of them and more of them, then it's not going to matter. That you know, laser or whatever piece of technology you have is going to be sitting over the corner like a treadmill with a bunch of clothes on top of it. So let's marry both of them and make it happy for both the patients and for us. Next slide, please. Are you preparing for what? For what insurance is what they're doing to us and what, what's going to continue to happen and other things that are happening in healthcare. MDs who are not referring to us as much anymore because of uh, the big healthcare systems out there and maybe super groups in your area. You know, things are not necessarily going to be the same. They've already, they've already gotten worse over the course of time, certainly in my 28 years, you know, more uh, scrutiny about our claims and, you know, taking a look at every single DME that we do, it's not going to get better. So what are you doing for your practice to prepare for what's going to happen in the future? And we know it's probably not going to get better. And I'm a pretty positive guy, but I've seen what's happened in healthcare and I want to prepare my practice. And hopefully I can help you think a little bit differently and prepare your practice by being able to increase the percentage of cash services in your business. So I really believe in staying one step or five steps ahead of what's happening in the healthcare system. Otherwise, you're just gonna end up with a practice, just get by, go paycheck to paycheck, and never really get paid for the blood, sweat, and tears that you put into this. Next slide, please. The P&G model, I love this. This is, this is like one of the most exciting things I've ever heard. And I use this now in my business to grow different cash profit centers. Again, outcomes are important, absolutely. Uh, but I love talking about cash and money and revenue because you know we're in business to do that, right? We wanna get people better and we wanna make, make money. So the P&G model, what is it? They have 23 $1 billion products. Again, there's tw they have 23 one billion dollar products. What does that mean to us? Okay, so let's take laser. Let's take, you know, shockwave. Let's take regenerative medicine. Let's take toenail fungus laser, and take those products deep, and have cash profit centers for every single one of them, and not just look for the next new shiny object, but focus on what the what are the things we have in front of us 
or what things can we put in front of us so that we can be the podiatric version of P&G. No, we're not going to have a $1 billion profit center, but scale it to podiatry. Maybe it's a twenty-five, fifty dollars to $100,000 pro profit center for an individual technology that you have in your business. And I think thinking about this depth is really important because a lot of people get a new piece of technology and they get excited and they've got this pool of patients that are ready to go. And then once they burn through them, then it's like, now what? What do I do? And we're going to talk about marketing. We're going to talk about you know, talking to a lot of your patients about the technology that you have there and not just having it sit there and try to sell itself. And Sarah's got some wonderful marketing tools that you can use if you do decide to use Remy or if you're already using Remy technology so that you can hand those out to patients and have visuals to patients. But it's really got to be the spoken word. It's got to come out of your mouth. And again, think like P&G, take these products and these technologies deep and you'll have more cash services in your business. Next slide, please. So how does money move to anything? Whether we're talking about, you know, David was talking about selling ice cream and, you know, whether, you know, you're the butcher, the baker, or the candlestick maker, money moves to two things and two things only, confidence and belief and enthusiasm. By who? You, the person that's doing the prescribing slash selling. You really have to believe in what you're doing and have confidence in what you're doing. And that can come from having something in your hand and using it and seeing the outcomes, or it can come from what I call trust, believing in someone you really trust that, yes, this does work, whatever this may be, and it's something that's going to benefit your patients, it's something that's going to benefit your bottom line, and you can speak to it without necessarily you know, have it in your hand first. But certainly, it's more believable when you're able to do it, see the results of it, and then really have the confidence to speak about it. And then being enthusiastic about it. You can tell how enthusiastic I am about this because I love this topic. And this is how I talk to patients about technology when I believe that it's something that can help them. And maybe in the case of laser, it might be after some things that I've already done for them, or it might be at the very front end where they've had other things done and they're looking for a solution and there's nothing else that can be done. Uh, we talk about laser technology. Wherever you put it in your treatment plan, you just really have to come from a place of confidence, belief, and enthusiasm. And money will flow to you a lot more in those respects. Trust me, people, they get what you believe in. And they can tell if it's just something you're trying to sell them or if it's something that you really believe in and you're going to get a good result. But of course, expectations are important too. So we don't tell people 100% with anything. We let them know what's realistic. And this way on the back end, if things don't work out and they've paid for it, um, they're not necessarily going to be upset with you and not come back, not refer to you. So confidence and enthusiasm are critical. Next slide, please. I talked about depth over width. You know, taking whatever technology you have and really driving it deep, whatever treatment plans you have, taking them deep. I've seen too many doctors like want to get this, that, and the other thing, and the next shiny object, and this one's going to make my practice better, and this one marketing thing's going to take my practice better, instead of, you know, there's just a lot of good things that you probably already have in your business, and adding new technology like laser, if you choose to do it or if you already have it, is just another great way to help patients get better outcomes and for you to generate more revenue. So I really believe in the whole depth model over the width model. It just makes your business, and again, think P&G, take these products and services as deep as you possibly can. And that means long-term thinking. So next slide, please. It really comes down to thinking long-term. Again, uh, when I purchased my first laser back 10 years ago, I wasn't thinking about like the, the, the 20 or 30 patients that I had in the pool there that were ready to go. I was thinking about like, you're gonna see my reverse engineering model. I was thinking long-term, like 10, 15, 20 years of having this wonderful piece of technology that's not gonna go away, that's probably only going to get better. How can I get my patients better? And how can I uh, get more revenue for the business? So you just can't think short-term about this. And having a marketing plan to any piece of technology, any innovation, is how you can have more confidence behind the long-term thinking. Next slide, please. So this is a really important concept, and, and I can't tell you the number of times that um, I've said this to podiatrists in, in, in small groups, individually, or on the stage, and I, and I see the nods and, you know, like, yes, this is totally the case. So 
um, the person thinking about the money in the treatment room usually isn't your patient. It's you. And maybe your staff person, if they have a hang up with money. You know, we think that patients are so concerned about the price and all of that. And yet, you know, they want value. They want to get better. And, you know, the reason they might you might be thinking this way is that you think that people aren't willing to spend money. They're not, they're not willing to buy and you're prejudging them. Um, all you have to do is bring the confidence, belief, enthusiasm, and the value behind what you're doing. And then no one in the treatment room is thinking about the money. So I can guarantee you that a large percentage of people probably on this call um, are the ones in the treatment rooms that are thinking about the money and worried about what the patient's gonna do. Like I just have, I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm unattached to the outcome of what the patient says. I'm more attached to how can I get this patient better and what's the best and fastest path to do that? And if it means that they have to spend money, then it's their choice whether they do it or not. And your percentage of patients who say yes to your um, prescribing or selling cash services will go up when you stop thinking about the money. Next slide, please. That, there we go. And, and here's what I mean. So this is not just me saying this. This is according to research. Only 10% of buyers use price as a top three criteria for making a purchase. Value is number one. It's always way at the top of the list. And certainly, you know, a particular product um, or the authority of the person who's selling it. There's a number of other things that are much higher on the criteria list than the actual price of the product. And we all know this, we're all buyers and our patients, our, our staff, we're all buyers. We've all purchased more for things than we probably could have. I mean, why do they sell Louis Vuittons for the price that they do or, you know, Mercedes or, or whatever the product may be. So think of it from your perspective. You're no different than the patient. So we're all buyers. We all buy things mostly based on other things than just the price. Certainly there's gonna be a percentage of people and again, here, it's about 10% who are selling because of their resources or whatever, and we don't judge that. It's just the way it is. So when you're in the room, just remember that very few of them are actually thinking about the price. Next slide, please. So I think it's really important that we create a cash culture in our business. It can't just be you, but certainly it starts with you, and you have to believe it, and you have to have the confidence and enthusiasm behind it. Uh, but all team members have to know that this is what we're doing in our business is we're increasing the number of times that we have conversations with patients about cash services. Maybe it's orthotics, maybe it's surgery because of high deductibles. I mean, we all know that that's the name of the game now. And I think it's easier now than ever to prescribe and sell cash services because patients are used to paying for things a lot more in healthcare versus five to 10 years ago when it was all third party driven. It's not anymore. So. Um, now is the best opportunity and the economy is so much better now than ever that, you know, people have more disposable income and they're willing to part with their money a little bit more. Again, if you bring the value and the belief and the enthusiasm, you know, more often than not, nowadays, patients are willing to say yes to that. Everybody in the office know, has to understand what being a cash business, and I'm not saying all cash and never would I uh, recommend that you go all cash at this point. Um, but what does it mean to have a cash culture? Everybody understands what's happening and your staff has to get confident, confidence in the technology as well. And I wanna share the testimonials with my staff members when things are going well. Certainly sometimes the medical assistants see it because they're in a the treatment room, but I want everybody in the office to know that when we bring a piece of technology in the office, this is really truly helping patients. And I share those with them either you know, face to face or by email with the whole team that, you know, this is what happened with Mary Johnson. She had three Remy laser treatments and she's 70% better already. And she had, you know, she had a, a number of failures with other doctors and this was the one technology that took care of it. Or maybe it was shockwave or a toenail fungus or something else. Written agreements, I believe are very important with patients that is when you're doing cash services. You know, what what is the price? How many treatments are there? Are they going to get? And then, you know, we use payment plans for some things in our practice. Uh, we typically do like a down payment of something and then a payment plan, you know, as high as three times. And, you know, we really, have we gotten burned? Okay, yes, once or twice, or, you know, maybe a few times, but uh, in reality, uh, patients are honest, they're ethical in most cases. 
and uh, they just want to get better. And you know what? When you get a good outcome, they're willing to pay for it. Next slide, please. So this is the reverse engineering. I do this with pretty much everything that I do. I do this when I bring in a new associate into the business and talk about um, how to generate or how to get to a point where you're generating a million dollars in revenue. Or in this case, when I bring a new technology, a new innovation into the practice to help patients get better, get better outcomes, faster outcomes, I reverse engineer it and always think long-term about it. So let's just break this down into a $25,000 cash profit center. And let's say it's Remy Laser because this is something that I've done for my practice. And I'm thinking long-term about it. And these are just smaller numbers that I'm thinking about for my business. But just to make it real, this is how you generate, a, a, as we talked about at the top, a $100,000 cash profit center is take individual products and reverse engineer the numbers. So let's say that you want $25,000 in revenue. So over a 46 week period, it only breaks down to $543 a week. You know, when you break these things down into smaller numbers, and I do this with my PPVs and how many patients I wanna see, you know, it makes it more real. You know, what does one more patient mean when it comes to, you know, a cash product like a Remy laser or anything? Um, it doesn't really take a lot to equal uh, it takes a little to equal a lot. So we don't necessarily need like a large volume of people to get numbers that are real for our practice. So what we do in our practice, we do six uh, Remy laser treatments for a price of $397. I'm not telling you what you should do in your practice, but this has been very easy to prescribe and sell to patients. And again, breaking it down a little bit further, two new starts per week equals $794. Now times 46 weeks and we're over the 25K. So this is a really nice number. And again, I'm looking for much bigger numbers than this over the course of time, but break it down into small pieces. Don't make it unrealistic. I'm not telling you that in year one, you're gonna have a $100,000 cash profit center with any piece of technology, although it's possible. Some people have done that. You might have high enough volume. You may be good at selling and you may have the right patients to do that with. But if not, and you're starting from scratch, this is what I recommend looking at reverse engineer, reverse engineer everything in your business and break it down into you know, small bite sizes so that it's so much easier. It's like, how do you eat an elephant? One step at a time, right? One bite at a time. Same thing when you're dealing with generating cash profit centers like this. Next slide, please. So three effective praise, uh, phrases. Now I'm getting a little, little more into the uh, psychology. I use these all the time. I mean, probably without fail with every single conversation. The first two are really the phrases. The third one's a little bit different, but this is where the confidence uh, and belief really comes across to the patient. And, you know, I've been doing this for 28 years, and I don't know if it necessarily matters how long you've been doing it for. I mean, certainly younger practitioners may not feel like they've got the credibility, the authority, the expertise uh, in the eyes of the patient, but I tell patients what I've found works best is, you know, fill in the blank. What I found works best is, you know, this laser treatment for this particular condition. And patients believe me, you know, they, they know that I'm ethical and that I'm going to, you know, do the right thing for them. Uh, and that maybe I've done, you know, the, the demonstration of the MRI is negative for a tear or a fracture or those kinds of things. And, you know, they see that it's real and that this is the best option for them. So I use this with pretty much everything that I talk about, whether it's insurance based or cash based, doesn't matter. What I found works best is, and I know other people that have adopted this and feel like it's been one of the things that has changed the game in terms of being able to prescribe or sell cash services better. And then the other one is I've been using this for a long time and then I read it in a book called Persuasion and found that it's actually been researched that this is a real effective thing. And I probably heard it from somebody else. I'm sure I didn't come up with it, but fortunately it's not a thousand dollars. I use that with lasers. I use that with things that are, you know, in the some hundred dollar range. So, you know, there's a psychology to people like kind of relaxing that, oh, wow, thankfully, because I've had many patients say, well, I thought that was going to be $2,000 because many times patients think, think that something um, is or should be more expensive than we necessarily price it at. So I'll use this all the time with orthotics, with, with shockwave, 
with Remy laser, with toenail fungus, you know, fortunately it's not a thousand or sometimes I might say, fortunately it's not a couple thousand dollars, it's X. And you can just see them kind of relax like, oh, well, thankfully. And it just, you know, kind of puts that number in a place that they feel more comfortable with. So, and I would just suggest test these, see how they work for you. And um, I'd be very surprised if they didn't help. And then using the important nose. So when it comes to uh, Remy laser in particular, um, I love the nose, you know, no pain, no downtime, no side effects, no meds, no incisions, no shots, you know, those kinds of things. Um, th those are important to patients. We all know that. Um, they don't necessarily like any of these things on this list. So, um, you know, they, they want ease, they want convenience. And um, you, you can certainly make the uh, buying experience so much better when you put it in these terms and they see the value of these things. Next slide, please. So dynamic demonstration is something I've also learned from Dan Kennedy is the one I think who, who uh, came up with this term and it's, and it's can you be used in any profession, um, any industry, but in our industry, dynamic demonstration is essentially simple things that we do all the time, like x-rays and MRI, CT, ultrasound, whatever you have, whether it's uh, you know, a, a report from a lab, or you know, just uh, maybe blood work. You know, patients want to see that. Oftentimes, we make diagnoses. You know, most of the time, we're all taking X-rays. But beyond that, we're often making diagnoses without necessarily having as much data as the patient might want to have. And I'm not saying we're doing unnecessarily tests. I don't own an MRI or CT, so there's no benefit to me financially to do that. Um, we do it because it's the best thing for the patient. So. It's so much easier to prescribe and sell cash things when you have things to demonstrate to the patients. When you show the patient that, no, you don't have a torn peroneal, peroneus brevis tendon or a PT tendon or whatever, you know, there's some inflammation and there's pain there. It's so much easier to recommend something like a Remy laser. And the same thing goes with CT ultrasound. So, you know, patients really do want demonstration. And it's very rare that somebody shakes their head and says, no, I don't want you to order that MRI. You know, of course, unless there's money involved and, you know, we have that type of patient that's gonna come up every so often, but most people wanna see it. Like, they're pretty much not in their head going, yeah, that would be great, I really wanna know what's going on here. They're concerned, you know, they're oftentimes way more concerned than we are. They think the worst and, you know, we understand things because we do it every day. And yet you can dynamically demonstrate so many things that'll get pa patients to understand and want to move forward with a treatment plan, whether it's cash or not. Next slide, please. So I always say the rising tide, when it comes to um, innovation, um, we really have to have the right approach to marry the innovation with the marketing. So again, thinking long-term with this, reverse engineering it, it's always multimedia marketing generally and specifically. So generally obviously is about foot problems and specifically is about you know, specific conditions that um, a particular piece of technology like a Remy laser would be beneficial for. So I do a lot of specific marketing where um, you know, whether it's a brochure or whether it's something on the wall or a direct mail piece or an email. You know, we'll talk about the ultimate podiatric marketing machine where, you know, I want to use all different mediums to reach out to patients. Um, it's mostly not going to sell itself. So, you know, Sarah has some wonderful marketing um, collateral things that you can use in your business if you decide to use the Remy or you would know that if you're already using the Remy laser. Um, those are great and it's wonderful to hand those things out and plant seeds and think long term because sometimes people are going to buy now and sometimes they're going to buy not now, which means possibly later. And we just want to plant that seed with them. It might not be the right time for them. It might might have something to do with money at that particular point. Um, but it's got to come out of your mouth um, and then let the collateral do some of the work for you. And email, direct mail. You know, I always talk about serve first marketing approach where I'm not trying to sell. I, I, I'm, I'm educating patients. I'm giving them content. I'm letting them know why, what, um, how. And, um, you know, they can often decide for themselves. I don't need to, you know, put that, put that in their face all the time that we've got this great laser and it does this, that, and the other thing. And this is how much it costs and all those kinds of things. You know, if you serve first and really provide content to people, um, it's going to be easy for you to prescribe and sell something like a laser or shockwave or anything else. Next slide, please. 
So your most effective path to getting patients to say yes to your prescription, your, 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 your selling of anything is authority. And authority comes from serving first. Authority comes from being confident. Authority comes from, you know, knowing your craft. Authority comes from, you know, knowing that particular technologies work. Um, so the more you're an authority in the eyes of your patients, the easier it is for them to do anything. And we all know that. I mean, the Kardashians have a whole ton of authority now with people and they can sell just about anything. That's just the way it is in this world. So, you know, it should be easier for us. We wear a white coat, we've got a degree, and yet, you know, sometimes we don't come across as being that authoritative figure. And, you know, we need to do that more. And certainly when you have the confidence behind something that works, uh, your authority will go up. But when you serve first with the marketing that I talked about, um, your authority is going to go up because patients are going to look at you as the expert even more so than just sitting in your treatment chair once or twice. Next slide, please. So again, the perfect marriage. I'm always thinking about outcomes and revenue together. We want to get patients better. We want to generate revenue for our business when you have effective technology. And I truly believe David's going to go into the Remy laser and he's going to have just as much passion about that as I have for what I'm talking about here. Um, you marry these two things together. It's just a wonderful mix for practice. And I believe, again, um, insurance against what the insurance companies and the healthcare systems want to do to us. They want to crush us. And we got to do whatever we can to, um, you know, sling that arrow back or sling that bow back and uh, cast that stone, David against Goliath. Next slide, please. So we'll talk about this at the t on the tail end, um, the ultimate podiatric marketing machine. At this point, um, I'm going to turn it over to David. Thank you all so much for being here, and I will um, fill you in on the ultimate podiatric marketing machine on the tail end. Go ahead, David. It's all yours. Thank you. I appreciate that, Chris. It was uh, you made you reminded me. I, I think what uh, what Chris is talking about it's part of it's the natural communications between human beings. I was taught this information over. 40 years ago by my mentor who was named Edwin Prober. And, you know, the, the way you get better at it is you, if you care about the patient, you're going to learn how to communicate with the patient. But that being said, next slide. It was very good, Chris. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. We can skip who I am. Okay. I, you know, I put a mission statement together. I've worked for a lot, a lot of companies. I've learned a lot. Again, you know, sometimes you learn what not to do. Uh, but don't focus on that. Focus on what you should do. Again, the laser has to be effective. It's got to be affordable. It's got to have a fast return on on uh, on on the investment. I mean, I've uh, I, I've had so many people. I, I've talked to talked to them just recently. I was in New York doing demonstrations, and the doctor said to me, uh, it was, he was very interesting. He said, I said, why did you spend sixty two thousand dollars on a laser? He said, you know, I paid it off this year, seven years later. And, and, and it was just the most amazing story I'd ever heard. I said, why'd you do it? And he said to me, uh, well, it was effective. And plus I got med I got audited by Medicare and they stopped paying me and I was forced to do this and look for uh, revenues that were not insurance. And he told me, I got my money back, but they dragged me out for two or three years. So sometimes something that negative happens to you can turn into something very positive. You've got to see uh, what's really in front of you. I always say that, I'm, I, I tend to get a little bit off, but I want to finish this. Uh, it's always darkest when the sun comes up. And I was very impressed with this doctor. He purchased my Remy. Why did he purchase it? There's a, the, the, re the reason was is because you can have the greatest technology in the world and the return on investment is not there and it's not multifunction. I don't think you can just buy a pain laser today. It's got to be multifunction. And I felt that way for years. If you ever want to read a story about, uh, I was in podiatry today, I think it was, our management talking about mobile multifunctional lasers years ago, but I finally fine tuned it the this for one thing, and that is I became a manufacturer and designer. I cut out the middleman. Every time you talk to a salesperson, there's a, a commission there. I'm giving you that commission. And the most important thing is at all times I like to talk about uh, you know practice management and how to make you successful. And whenever you, you can go next time, whenever you purchase the Remy, and if you don't purchase the Remy, if you want to talk about Southern Podiatry, you can call me up. Uh, the Remy, what's it do? It's FDA cleared. And clearance is important today. 
it's very important you can you can market at that but it's it's for inflammation a lot of these lasers out there are, are for inflammation but you have to have multiple things uh, we've moved on to warts uh, surgical non-surgical we're now treating uh we've been treating i've been treating laser toenails for so many years and uh we've developed some really good protocols i had a podiatrist I'm talking to today and then I thought she was talking about how great the pain was and she says no I'm talking about the fungus toenails I'm getting amazing results now what did I think I'm very skeptical about treating a fungus I just am I don't know why maybe it's my hang up uh, I need to investigate the result in the future I plan on bringing in people to talk about their success to you uh, and fungus toenails something we see a lot of but we see more pain and to me pain is the is amazing because um, it's instantaneous, which we'll talk about. Next slide. The Remy is, uh, it's, it's across the board. It's, it's a laser that can go from low power to high power. It can go pulsing. You can read any type of uh, journal article and put in those protocols right now. There's almost no protocol you can, you can put in it. It's multifunction, it's multi-wavelength. Next slide, please. So you have a lot of future with it. There's, there's therapy lasers and there's surgical the remy's both with therapy lasers it's all about i want you to remember two words p uh, p photo bio modulation therapy and the second thing is atps and that's really the bottom line it's a photochemical uh effect to stimulate the cells to produce mo uh, a more atps that's the part one what the remy does the second part is a surgical laser next slide it can cut out a wart it can treat warts without anesthesia with no anesthesia i'll show you how to treat these things and 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 my, my goal is to go out and find the best protocols to always improve but i'm getting tremendous positive feedback not only in pain but the treatment of warts and it's affordable you don't have to spend uh you know thousands of dollars for a separate machine this i always put up here because the, the peer review literature supports what I'm saying for pain. Me, pain is the most important thing uh, uh, to treat because it's almost instant relief. Next slide. That's important, but patient comes in and they're treated uh, you know, with a plantar fasciitis or Achilles tendonitis and they walk out with no pain. Uh, right off the bat, they, they, you've given them a sample and a demonstration of what, um, of, of what they're gonna expect. I tell patients and I, and I teach doctors, after they're out of pain and you show them, there's two parts of this, Mrs. Jones. One is we got rid of your pain, but you need a, a, an average of six streams to heal it. We've gotten rid of the pain, but we need to heal it. Um, there's, so it's biostimulation, ATP production. Um, next slide. It's been proven. This has been for a lot of time. Again, ATPs, I mean, it's, and it, this is a known fact, the, the light goes into the mitochondria, which stimulates uh, the chromophore, well, the chromophore is absorbed into the mitochondria, and you get more ATPs, which is a whole cascade of events. Next slide. I'll pick this up a little bit. Wound, wound healing is amazing. I just want to, you to know, do one thing. I mean, I can say it's scar reduction, improve vascular, it does all this, but I want, there's a study out there that was given to me many years ago. It's called Kent State uh, Podiatry, but it's OCPM, where uh, they did a study on the, on the wavelengths that, I, that the Remy produces. Uh, I want you to just, eat, I'd like you to read it. It's amazing with wound care. Amazing with wound care. Next slide. This was done at least 10 years ago with two treatments. Look at the results of that. Next slide. And this is just not one case study. Uh, we can we can move on with this. You can read this. This is recorded, so you're going to get uh, a copy of this. Now, why is the Remy different? The Remy is different because next slide. The the Remy you need a you need the proper power density. And I always give the analogy when you're treating an infection, uh, you have to have the right route, and you have to have. I'm talking about like an osteomyelitis or septic. That's a little different. But let's say an osteomyelitis, you, you have to get the proper dosage and, and the proper amount of energy, or it's not going to be effective. The same thing with uh, an antibiotic. You need the right, you first have the right antibiotic, which, uh, you know, would be the right wavelengths. I'm trying to give you an analogy. The second thing would be that you need enough energy to get the, 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 the cells to start to function better. 
it's sort of like it's sort of like jumps next slide sort of like jumping uh jump starting a battery 980 versus 810 the remy does both we, uh, this is my favorite laser uh because you you've got the 980 which does biostimulate which helps to heal but it has a high analgesic effect the 810 or, or and one thing about wavelengths is it's not 810 there's a it's it's a therapeutic window uh it, it could be 20 degree it could be 20 plus or 20 minus uh, laser wavelengths are not like they're not they're not just straightforward they spread out but the 810 is known and been proven across the board to give you the best biostimulation i've combined them both and i learned that many many years ago so i've added it it's too expensive to add it now but now that i'm a manufacturer and designer i've made it very cost effective for you as a podiatrist next slide and the quality's there this was a research we did where we're actually getting better results and i've heard this many many times i don't know if we're going to be able to prove it with a double blind randomized placebo controlled study but i'm having podiatrists telling me that the dual wavelength 9a and 810 is getting much better results for fungus Again, I'm not a big fan of fungus, but I'm trying to give you the best results possible. We're doing micro drilling with it. We're working on products where a lot of people think it's next slide. They think it's the biofilm. Uh, I'm doing studies with podiatrists at all times. The sponge theory is you need to get enough energy at the surface in order to get the proper um, uh, power density. So if you don't have enough energy at the skin surface, you're sure as hell not going to get it deeper down so you have to start with a high powered class four laser now there's other opinions on that theory and if there are you can set the remy to the proper the power levels you uh want to use i'm very experienced and have a a long track record with class four high powered lasers i like them but i'm not saying low power uh, is the end of the world some people have differences of opinion but you can do across the board low powered lasers cannot do high power densities the Remy can do both and in between. So you have a lot of uh, vacillation. I prefer, next slide, I prefer you to use my um, my protocols because I know they work and they've been done for years. Uh, this is a study, how much is enough? Uh, about six, uh, six joules per centimeter square, which shows you need a lot of energy because a lot of it dissipates. You know, we're not dealing, uh, you know, we're dealing where you get a deflection, reflection, absorption, different wavelengths and, and, and different dense uh, densities of tissue so the remy can give you enough power i'd say the majority i just did a, a friend of mine a shoulder today uh you know um and he came in there's another reason why he came in uh i had to pay him for some work he did in the house but he told me his shoulder hurt him so he came to get me but anyway um he walked out with no pain he had a super spinotic uh tendinosis tendinitis and uh you know it took me 15 minutes because i i you got to get the proper diagnosis i'm not a shoulder expert i told him that but i was able to eliminate certain areas just by treating them and I, when he walked out his range of motion was a thousand times better a thousand times better next slide okay other factors uh that affect uh laser penetration you have to again i'm going back to power density you have to get the right dosage and the right dosage over time and area and that's what the remy does that's why it works next slide so why do again you know the, the reverse under penetration and under dosage is why lasers don't work many many years ago and they learned this through the studies that at one time many years ago oh lasers don't work well it's like oral antibiotics don't work if you don't give the proper dosage it's the same principle so you must have the proper power density. Most important thing is you must have the proper diagnosis. The second thing, next slide, the second thing is you have to have the proper dosis, both dosage and power. So the higher the power of the outlet of the laser, the greater the penetration. One thing that's interesting about the, about the, the Remy is that the hand pieces, because we have a, a, a mixing of wavelengths, it's not like, it's not that hot at all. They feel warmth. Warmth is good to feel. The patient knows they just feel good and relaxed. But the fact you can take our hand, our hand pieces are only eight ounces. You can push them right down to where the plantar fascia uh, inserts into the medial tubercle, the calcaneus, right down there. So penetration is not a problem anymore with with the Remy hand pieces. Uh, we're always advancing and always improving, and that's one thing I want to do. I'm out there looking for the best. That's why I bought Chris tonight. 
I want to go out and bring in the best of the best and offer it to you. So it's the Remy is important, but there's it's, there's a lot of factors in making you successful. Again, you have to have an effective technology, but you have to be able to bring in patients. And I got to tell you the uh, next slide, which is real important. You are I I am marketing the Remy with every patient that walks in. If you can get pain relief immediately with them, and you should, and I'll teach you how to do that, they're gonna go out and tell everybody. Fungus, again, it, it does work, uh, but it takes a lot of time. Fortunately, this is not just a fungus laser. Um, you know, the other day, real quickly, I had a, a woman tell me, and I'm gonna investigate, she had a, a futana laser she spent thousand, over 50,000, and she said, hey, it works great. And you know, my first defense is, how can it work great? But I learned something. I said, well, maybe I need to revisit this. Uh, you know, maybe I just don't like fungus, and therefore I'm not listening to the, to the people who have the remedy that it works great. Uh, and this particular woman used no topicals. I'm going to go visit her. I mean, she's used it. She charges a thousand. You know how I said why I believe that it worked with with her is that she charges a thousand dollars a case, and she's still in business. She's been doing it for years. The problem is the maintenance of the laser, uh, and we have the same wavelengths, the maintenance of the laser, uh, the repair, you can't get, you can't move it around. The Remy is only four pounds. Next slide. It's important. You need a portable laser that can move around and it has the best technology. Uh, PT, it's, these are just areas that I'm, that I'm talking about with, with the PT, you know, everybody sends everybody out to PT. I'm not saying that you should keep everybody, but if somebody has a sprain, strain, maybe you can keep these, and you're benefit, benefiting the patient because it's much more cost effective to bring, keep your PT patients in your practice. You'll win, the, you always gotta look, the patient has to win first, and then you win. Uh, laser therapy is comfortable, uh, and it feels good. Physical therapy, um, I don't claim to be a physical therapist, but I think that it's something, keep your mind open, and, and with other, if you keep your other your mind open, next slide, to treatments and indications for treatment like physical therapy um, and not just automatically send it out, you may be helping your patients. Give them that option. So what do you look for when you're purchasing a class four laser? Again, power. The Remy, both wavelengths are 15 watts and you can mix them together. It's got to do a continuous wave, uh, I believe strongly, and that's when you're running laser continuously. The Remy can do it all day long. It has very high, it's a 30 watt laser. So you wanna, you wanna buy a, a very powerful laser that will last for five years. That's very, very important. Next slide. Laser, very quickly, lasers and micro drilling. Uh, we've added micro drilling. Uh, it's been very effective. Uh, next slide. Uh, we're, uh, at the F, the the Remy is FDA cleared for onychomycosis. I've added more wavelengths to try to make it more effective. Uh, you know, the the micro drilling you can do just micro drilling in the Remy, or you can combine it. I like micro drilling. I think the whole idea of it to to allow topicals to penetrate better uh, is is a brilliant idea. Just by putting the little micro holes in there, you've actually dried out and changed the environment. Next slide. This is something interesting. I call it the fire break technique. It's where uh, you just put the hole after you, you can just put the holes around there because you've actually. You now, one of the things when you're, I don't know if you've ever seen this, you ever treat fungus, even with an oral lamisil, uh, once uh, after a couple months, it starts, it can start to regress. I saw that with lamisil. I'm not saying lamisil is a, is a bad um, uh, medication, it's just there's a high reoccurrence with fungus no matter what you use. I think if you put the, the holes in there, you can reduce it because you're able to put topicals to, to, cre to create a, uh, you know, a barrier uh, much easier, or you, or, or you can add laser treatment to it. But that fire break is in, in California. When they want to stop a fire from moving forward, they burn down an area to, to get the barrier there. This is a barrier, and you can move it right next to the lunula. Very easy to do with the Remy and very inexpensive. Next slide. Again, we're talking about uh, water uh, evaporating. Next slide. With, so you, you're talking about, uh, so it, you can use the Remy with one treatment on micro drilling. You can combine it. I will go into much greater detail when I train you on it, but it's very cost effective, very cost effective to do micro drilling now. I mean, the machines used to cost $12,000. I used to be, uh, 
you know, one of the distributors for it. I learned about the technology, but you have to make it more affordable to the doctor and you have to have multifunctional. Uh, again, the Remy does micro drilling, it does laser fungus. This is all FDA cleared and pain. My favorite's the pain. Next slide. Uh, again, we next slide here about the micro cooling. Now, this is uh, the Remy. It comes in, uh, I, this is my favorite, the 30 watch. You can go four wavelengths. I prefer the two, they're more time tested. Uh, but we can do any combination that you want. And it's only four pounds. The handpiece, uh, it's all finger switch controlled. Uh, it's a very easy laser. If you hear the barking in the background, that's my uh, my dog, the Remy. Uh, it's named after my Yorkshire Terrier. It's only four pounds, and it's got a lot of uh, a lot of fight in it. Next slide. Uh, these are all indications. Whenever there's inflammation, it's amazing for arthritis. Uh, wherever there's inflammation, bursitis, neuromas, post-surgical, uh, you can treat every post-surgical patient. You can treat their wounds to reduce scarring because it will reduce inflammation and swelling. Uh, we now have a micro drilling uh, and surgical handpiece where the, the tips are disposable uh, at one time, and we still have it, you have a choice. We still have it where you just, uh, you strip the wire and you move forward each time. But this is just, I like effectiveness, but I like convenience. You can go from surgery to fungus to pain in less than 10 seconds without changing anything, any setup. Just Flip, you flip the, uh, the, the the different hand pieces on the Remy. I believe I'm the only one that has that uh, uh, idea, but I like convenience and I want you to have convenience and quickness. Next slide. These are just some of the touch screens that, and, and the Remy. Uh, you can go, I have my own personal uh, uh, protocols that come with a, the Remy, but this is, uh, these are some of the touch screens we can go, they're all preset in there. They're all preset, but uh, you can go use the body size, the skin color. Again, I like CW. Next slide. Again, uh, it's important we go back to my mission statement. How can I make the device, the Remy, affordable for you? Well, if I'm a distributor, I got to buy it from somebody else. And, uh, you know, you got to add on that, uh, you know, commission is a salesman. I've been, I've been a distributor before. Uh, now I am a manufacturer, and I, when I am a manufacturer, I have so much more control over innovation, service, all the all the Remy service directly in the United States with a center uh, that um, you know I've worked with for years. I've worked with all these people for years. This is not new. I have long-standing relationships with these with these manufacturers, these service people. And one thing about the Remy is interesting is that. Um, if I, God forbid, if I were to die tomorrow, you can get it repaired anywhere. It's a, it's a very standard laser. Uh, we have very little, uh, next slide, very little problems with repair of the laser. There's over 150 Remy's out there in podiatry right now and uh, in the last two years. So, um, you know, it's it, it stood the test of time, has definitely stood the test of time. So, um, you know, we're going to have a, a Terry. What's the next slide for a second? Back and I got to see what the next slide is for a second. Can you turn to the next slide? Yeah, I want Sarah to, to talk about um, the uh, the marketing program. And uh, one thing I would tell you is uh, two things that I'm offering tonight um, as a bonus for attending. If if you purchase the Remy uh, in a very short period of time, I don't know what the date is, uh, but in a short period of time, uh, we're gonna we're gonna give you an, an automatic. The Remy comes from the manufacturer with a two year warranty. I'm extending it for five years, and that is coming out of my pocket. That's how well I believe in the service. The second thing is, I think you need a mentor uh, and, and Chris Milken's proven podiatric marketing machine, and that's gonna be included in it. And I thank Chris for that, because we want you to be successful. We're not here to sell you uh, something that doesn't work. We know it works, but there's more to just work, making it work. Uh, you, you can treat, you know, you have to make money. We're in the business to help patients, but you deserve to make money and you should be waiting years and years and years. It should be at a short period of time. Sarah, who I've, I've been uh, very privileged to know, uh, Tento's marketing. These are, she's going to talk about some of the marketing tools that come with it. Uh, would you do that, please, Sarah? Absolutely. So it's really short and sweet on my end. Um, Dr. Milky obviously went through the importance of marketing and really anything that's medical based awareness and education is going to be the key in patient marketing. And so what my role is with David and, and the Remy Laser 
is an internal marketing toolkit. So it's a nice combination of templates for practice posters, brochures, advertising templates, which we can even change the sizing depending on where you want to run advertising, whether it be digital or print, postcard templates, which can also be used as simple handouts in the practice, appointment cards, as well as educational videos. And we even, something that's not listed on uh, the bullets right here, but we also have verbiage for your website. We have landing pages that you can use for your website if, um, if that's something that you need. I, I work well with webmasters and such. So really this is a nice templated kit for you so that it's very turnkey. Um, David has already kept the price of the laser down compared to competitors, but still you want to see your ROI as soon as possible and marketing is going to help that happen for you. So I provide my initial toolkit, which is primarily an internal marketing toolkit. But one of the things um, with the relationship with Dr. Milkey that has really been a blessing to the entire program is his podiatric marketing machine. And so I'm going to pass it over to Dr. Milkey to talk a little bit more about that again. Thank you, Sarah. So I've been uh, a student of marketing for 28 years. You know, when I first got into practice, I realized that I could have a mediocre practice if I didn't do much of anything, but I could have what I call a championship practice if I really learn how to market. So over the course of time, I've done uh, hundreds of different strategies. And eventually, at some point, I realized that um, these tools could work for anybody. So I took really the best of the best tactics that I've been using in my practice, you know, no different than your practice. Um, I was a single doctor, a uh, single location at the time, and just, you know, grew it to a uh, multi-doctor, multi-location, mainly because of marketing. Of course, good outcomes as well. I, I took the best of the best and put it into what I call the ultimate podiatric marketing machine. And really the most effective, easiest, and least expensive tactics that I've used over 28 years. I don't believe that you have to spend a lot of money uh, to really operate a good marketing machine in, in your business. And certainly the tools that uh, Sarah and Tentoes Marketing has for you will be uh, effective from a specific standpoint, but I'm looking at bring in as many patients as possible so you can have more conversations about all the different innovations and technologies that you have in your business. This flagship tactic, and there's about eight or nine different tactics in the ultimate podiatric marketing machine, is weekly automated emails. It has become one of my top three strategies for bringing new patients into the business and reactivating patients. So every single week, you'll, your patients will get an email from you. This is serve first, you, this is content marketing. This is me writing all the content for this and with the click of a button on the first of the month, literally, tens of thousands of patients from practices across the country are getting this one email. And it's going to look like it's you speaking to one patient at a time. And it's magical. I've been doing this for years and years, and there's not a day that goes by in my business now where I don't get some patient that comes in and says, I love your emails. I feel like I'm part of a community. I'm here because you wrote about plantar fasciitis or the laser or whatever. And I just know that that is the one thing that has been the game changer from a marketing perspective over the last few years. So that's the flagship tactic in there, and that alone is worth the price of admission, uh, but there's a lot more. I believe when it comes to marketing, analog and digital methods are important. It's just not one thing. We have some direct mail things. I write all the content, so this is mostly done for you. Um, that's the hardest part is sitting down and really writing and understanding words that get people to move and take action. Um, so we have analog tactics, we have digital tactics, uh, we have something for that you can give to primary doctors, it's called the 90 second or less foot fact for MDs. Um, so it's just a little one piece, I call it a newsletter, postcard, however form you wanna put it in, you get the content and then you can choose what you wanna do. We give that to our referring doctors because we wanna show them again, the expertise and the, the authority behind the things that we do. It's again, the serve first, like we want to continue to nurture those relationships and actually try to find new relationships as well. There's something called the condition of the month, which is a piece that sits out 
in your reception area so that patients can pick it up and read about, you know, toenail fungus or plantar fasciitis or calf pain. And I have one interesting story about that. It saved a life. A patient picked up um, a doctor's condition of the month flyer that was talking about calf pain, went back to the doctor and said, by the way, I've been having some calf pain. He had a DVT. That guy would have been dead in a couple of days had he not seen that thing. So it's just the magic of having tools like that in your office. Again, um, elevating you to more of an authority expert uh, position in the eyes of your patients. So there's a, something called a cash flow surge strategy with orthotics in there. Again, I write it all. All you have to do is like print out the, the database of patients and send it off, and it might cost you 50 bucks, and the ROI on that will be huge. The whole marketing system comes with, you're gonna get this for one year. So every single month, you're gonna get all the content and everything you need to drive more patients in. Referrals, reactivations, and retention. That's what marketing is all about. The three R's, referrals, reactivation, and retention. I can't tell you the number of practices, and mine included, that have a lot of new patients that walk in the door and only are one-timers. And when I found that out and realized that we've got to do a lot more to keep them, uh, I realized that something like this was really necessary. So I can guarantee you that if I came in your practice and looked at those numbers, they'd be a lot higher than you'd ever imagine because they were for me too. So we want to keep them in the business. There's a step-by-step -step training video. I'll show you exactly what to do with that. I have three practice building support calls in 2020, um, one in February, and then it's about every four months after that to answer questions, to show you more marketing tactics to help grow your businesses. Again, David and I are here to help you build. We've been doing this. He's 40 years. I'm 28 years. We love giving back. We want you to be successful. We truly believe in the independent practitioner. I can't speak to that enough because in my area, there's tons of healthcare system podiatrists and, you know, God bless them. I'm sure they're doing well and I like a lot of them, but they're the enemy now. So I want to really champion independent practices. I want you to survive. I want you to thrive. And these are the tools here that'll help you do that. The Remy laser is incredible. We've been using it in our practice. I've been around laser technology for 20 years. I would never spend $50,000. I wouldn't spend $20,000 on a laser when you can get it for the value and the uh, effectiveness that David has available here. And he's got, he's trusted. He's done this for many years. He speaks from the heart. He knows exactly what he's doing. So um, the, the Remy, laser's, Remy laser has been amazing. Innovation and marketing, it's a great marriage. Uh, that's Remy right here. <laughs> so um, anyone that wants to go to my website, this is my website. Uh, you can text me at any time. You can email me. If there's any specific uh, information you need about this or even your practice in general, I'm very happy to answer it for you. Uh, again, I hope you get the Remy because the Remy is here for you and uh, you'll do very well for it. Thank you very much.